Sorry, just had a little bit of a glitch with opening that before. So the next thing we want to do is create a shape file from the CSV file that we just made. So we go to create feature class. I'm just going to bring that on here. Create feature class from the XY table that says. I'm just going to go through this quickly if you want to see more details. Like I said, I've got another video covering it. Um, so we're going to add this onto our map, and I've just picked up. A, um, we've got a few measurements here. So you can see those are plotting on there. I'll just change that symbol so you can see those a bit more clearly. Uh, let's make that red. So we've got our points here. Um, and we want to check the data if we open the attribute table. Fingers crossed, yes, we've got dip, azimuth and dip that have come through fine there. So the next thing we need to do is change the symbol. So I've um, given you a, um, a font that you can install. You can search for a foliation symbol, but I've made a custom font that you can using Fontstruct. Um, so you can open that up and click on there to install. I've already installed on this computer. Um, and that'll be available in ArcGIS then. So we double click on the symbol and we're going to go to uh, edit symbol and we're going to change this to character marker symbol. So that's character as in a font character. Um, and if we scroll down through here, you'll find the OGLG1 font and we're going to use this foliation symbol. Um, now what you'll notice up here is that it's not quite centered properly, so apologies for that. Um, you can just give it an offset, I think it's 3 and 3 to get it symbol uh, rotating um, from the center of the symbol. Um, yeah, so that's just so that it displays in the correct location when it rotates. Um, and we can go OK then. Um, one cool trick you can do here is save as and call this uh, foliation. Um, I've already done that so I've got it up here so I can just use it whenever I want. And we can click OK. So now we've got all our symbols um, plotting here. I can zoom out a bit, there's a few more over there. So yeah, the next stage, now that we've got our symbols, is getting them to rotate. So if I go to uh, Properties, and then um, into Symbology tab, you can see this Advanced tab, and here we want to choose Rotation. And we're going to rotate using the Geographic Coordinate System. So we've got north is 0 and 90 east, that sort of, and so on and so forth, as opposed to the arithmetic system. And the rotation field we want to use is dip azimuth. We choose OK. Um, and then we can choose apply. Uh, so then just um, scroll in, and we can see that can verify that our foliation symbols are in fact rotated to the correct orientation. Now the next thing we can do is do the labeling. So if I go to properties, uh, first thing we want to do is make sure we're using the Matplex labeling engine. So if you go to customize toolbars labeling, let's bring that on here and Uh, click on labeling and choose use Matplex label engine. I could have made that part of the map document. It's usually stored in there, I think. 
Um, anyway, that's what we need to do, this sort of advanced labeling features. So we go back into right click on layer properties and go to the labels tab at the top here and we want to label features in this layer, label features the same way and we want to label field to be dip. So if I just go to apply you'll see that there's uh, I'll just go to OK as well. You see that there's a bit of a problem here with all the symbols plotting just to the side of the the marker. Now in geology we usually want to put the um, the dip um, on the tip of the symbol. So what we need to do is rotate the symbol, um, rotate the label as well. So back into properties and we want to go to placement properties and what we want to use is rotate by attribute and we want to use dip azimuth so we're using dip azimuth as the attribute to rotate the label around so that it's pointing on the tip and we're going to use geographic and we want to keep the label horizontal and keep it upright um, for label offset there's um, if you're using the Earth version, there's measure offset from exact symbol outline. If you're using feature geometry, you want to set it to about six points, I think. But here we can set it to about two points. Choose OK, OK. OK, so now we've got our um, labels plotting in the correct place. So you can see this approach would be applicable to other structural measurements as well. Um, if you're using lineation, you would use um, the trend as the rotation field instead of dip azimuth. Um, yeah, so uh, one thing I wanted to do in a follow-up post is talk about how to uh, display representative measurements. Uh, you notice that even some of these labels aren't displaying because there's a layer, um, there's a labeling conflict, so it won't be placing overlapping labels. Um, but it's also not very good in terms of this map to have all these measurements overlapping so I'm going to cover that in a future post um, and that's about it for now so thanks very much